Hello, children of God. My name is Yemi. I trust you are doing well. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I am so glad you're here. Your presence means a lot. So thank you. I'm excited about this message and I know it will be a blessing. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we'll come before you with open hearts. Thank you for this moment and for the opportunity to spend time in your presence and in your word. As we dive into this message, I pray that you will guide us and help us to truly hear and understand what you want to say. Father, clear our minds of any distractions and fill us with your peace and wisdom. Father, may this time be a blessing and may we go closer to you through this word. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I saw this message under one of my recent videos. Let me read out the question. This person says, How do you guys study the Bible and spend time with God? I feel I need help with that. I do pray and read the Bible, but feel I should be doing more in my time with God. I have just started to put my all in my faith and praying and being intentional with spending time with God. I don't yet hear his voice or get dreams to even hear what he's trying to say when I pray or ask him something. I do know he hears my prayers and my faith has built so much since I was first saved. Can anyone give any advice? What a beautiful message. Some of you have also reached out via email to ask me about this. So I am glad, I am so glad to hear that many of you are seeking to grow in your faith and deepen your relationship with God. What a joy. This is exactly what I live for and why I am here on this channel. So I'm going to share some practices that I personally use, which have been helping me greatly in my journey with the Lord. You don't have to do things exactly the way I do them, but this will give you some ideas on how to build a meaningful relationship with God and how you can hear him. I will also be sharing some personal examples to help illustrate these practices. I have a lot of examples, so I'll be sharing them. Number one, I set aside specific time each day for worship, Bible study, and prayer. Consistency helps in building a habit, and it has now become a routine for me. So consider doing the same. It could be in the morning, evening, or any time that works best for you. And let me tell you, it will not come easy. The devil will be mad about this, and all hell will break loose. Many things will come against you just to distract or stop you from establishing this habit. If you have other people in your household, especially kids, older kids, of course, not babies, you may need to set boundaries. You may need to set boundaries. My seven-year-old daughter now knows and understands that when I am spending time with God, she's not allowed to interrupt unless it is an emergency. And I have taught her what is an emergency and what is not. Some things just need to wait. And you need to enforce those boundaries. I've also found that any day I rush out of the house without spending proper time with God, I don't always feel like myself. I can become impatient and grumpy. One day recently, I can't remember the exact situation, but I was becoming impatient. And my daughter looked at me and said, Mom, I think you need to go spend more time with God. You are much sweeter after you've been with him. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. And it was such a great reminder for me. And I must say that there will be some days when things happen and you're not able to keep up with your appointment with God. Life happens. Some things happen that are beyond your control. 
In my case, no matter how chaotic the day may be, I still try to take out a few minutes to communicate with God. This could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be a dedicated space. I also try to make up the time later. Number two, start with worship. I love starting with worship songs because they open up my heart and set the atmosphere for my time with God. Then I pray about various things, depending on how I feel that day or how I'm led. Sometimes it is warfare prayer. And other times I just have a chat with God, like I'm having a chat with my friend because he's my friend. My conversation with God can range from things that I'm happy about, like this message, like the comment under the video, or things that I'm sad about, things I'm upset about. I just poured my heart to God because I know he wants to hear me speak about those things. And I end with prayer. Then I move on to Bible reading, which helps me a lot. And I also reflect on what I read. If you are new to studying the Bible and you want to be committed, consider using a Bible study app. Many resources are available online or in bookstores around you. And there are free plans on the YouVersion Bible app. Number two or number three, whatever number it is, take notes. I never go to God without my pen and my notebook. It's a sign of readiness to receive. Write down what you read and your thought about it. Reflect on what you read and how it applies to your life or the lives of people around you. This can help you understand the scripture and journaling as well can also be beneficial. It helps me a lot. The next point is be patient. Hearing God's voice and understanding his guidance takes time and practice. Building a relationship with God doesn't happen overnight. It requires patience and perseverance. Continue to seek him with all your heart and be patient with yourself. I can't stress this enough. God's timing is perfect and he will reveal himself to you in his way and his time. With time, you will begin to hear him speak to your heart. It may start with a gentle whisper, an inner peace, or a strong conviction, a thought that just comes out of nowhere, that aligns with God's word. A sudden insight you couldn't have thought of by yourself. Sometimes it could be a scripture, a Bible verse, or a Bible story that pops up in your mind, and so on. Make sure you do not discard this. Write them down and reflect on them. Trust that as you persist in seeking him, his voice will become clearer and more distinct. And also with time, the conversation will get longer. Praise God. The next point is keep on praying and have ongoing conversation with God. Maintain a prayerful attitude throughout your day. You don't need a secluded place to pray. Talk to God while you're walking. Talk to God while you're cooking, while you're driving, or during any activity. Share everything with him. This is what I do, whether big or small. This ongoing conversation will help cultivate a closer relationship with him. If you have a question, ask it out loud or in your mind. God hears you. And sometimes you may hear him respond to your spirit or through a thought. Even if you don't hear him immediately, trust that he hears you. He may initiate conversations with you as well. I will share an example of this. <laughs> a few days ago, I saw a comment on a worship video that I was listening to. The person was expressing frustration about comments, other people's comments, where people refer to God using a lowercase g instead of uppercase G. Honestly, at that moment, I didn't have an opinion. I was just reading the comment and boom, I heard a lot say, I don't mind. I looked at the art. I, bu <laughs> I busted laughing and said jokingly, Lord, but 
I did ask you. <laughs> and he replied, I knew you were going to ask me about it. <laughs> and I said, Lord, you know me too well. I love having these conversations because our God is so sweet and has a good sense of humor. And remember that God hears your prayers and sees your effort. So trust in his promises and have faith that he's with you and that he hears you, even if you don't hear it or even if you don't always feel it. And the last point I have here is dedication and commitment. Commitment is key to growing in faith. I've had to decline various invitations and put certain things on hold to prioritize my time with God. There have been times I left dishes unwashed or laundry undone because spending time with God was more important to me. You may feel you don't have time due to work, family, or other commitments. When I used to make similar excuses, yes, I've been there. I've been there. And when I used to make similar excuses, God said to me, what is important to you, you make time for. And that response has been stuck with me since then. Sometimes when I feel too lazy to get up, I say it out loud to myself. Yemi, me, what is important to you, you make time for. This is important. Your life depends on this. Yes, my life depends on it because I depend 100% on God. So plan your schedule around God rather than trying to fit him into your schedule. It should be at the center of your life and everything else should revolve around him. When we prioritize spending time with God, everything else falls into place. Our work, relationships, and other responsibilities align with his will and purposes for our lives. As Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all of them, shall be added unto you. You will find that as you prioritize God, other things will start to fall into place more naturally. Underline, underline the word naturally. So let us be intentional about making time for God each day. Let us carve out moments in our busy schedule to seek his presence. I know we're busy, we're all busy, but let us do this. Let's meditate on his word and commune with him in prayer. In his presence, we'll find strength. We'll find peace. We'll find guidance for every aspect of our lives. And to the person who wrote that comment and others who have reached out to ask, your desire to grow closer to God is a beautiful thing. And God wants you to know that he honors your effort. Keep pressing to him and he will meet you where you are. Praise God. May the Lord give you all wisdom and the discipline to prioritize your fellowship with him above all else. May he help you recognize the importance of spending time in his presence and empower you to make room for him in your daily life. May the Lord guide you in building a strong and meaningful relationship with him in Jesus' name. This is the word of the Lord for you. I pray it's a blessing. I pray it encourages you and strengthens you in Jesus' name. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.